Space The Final Frontier These are the voyages of the starship Sahu. My continuing mission To explore strange new worlds To seek out new life and new civilizations To boldly go where no man has gone before Aja, Seneb. Captain's Log, Stardate 9639.248. Supplemental. Riding on a boat, sailing through the stars. The ancient Egyptians were the first to conceive of traveling through the stars on ships. The evidence is available on the astronomical ceiling of the hypostyle hall of the Temple of Hathor at Ayunet. Depicted along with myself Sahu, is my wife Sopdet, the Sirius Star, depicted as a celestial cow, and our son Sopdu, depicted as a falcon. The connection between sailing on the waters of the Nile on ships, and sailing through the stars on ships, was an outgrowth of the fact that the ancient Egyptians viewed the astronomical Milky Way as the celestial Nile. Additionally, nautical sailors used the stars to navigate their ships, and on long voyages at sea at night, they would imagine that sailing on their boat was like sailing through the stars. So spaceships, or ancient astronauts are in fact explicitly attested to on the walls in ancient Egypt. The word extraterrestrial is an adjective used to describe anything outside of the planet Earth. There is nothing in the definition of the word extraterrestrial by itself, that has anything to do with sentience, intelligence, consciousness, or life. To suggest that the word extraterrestrial by itself has something to do with intelligence or life, is simply just a colloquialism which stems from a basic misunderstanding of the meaning of the word extraterrestrial. The phrase extraterrestrial life refers to life outside of the planet Earth. The phrase extraterrestrial intelligence refers to intelligence or sentience outside of the planet Earth, and the phrase intelligent extraterrestrial life refers to an intelligent life form outside of the planet Earth. The Sun, Moon, and stars are all extraterrestrials by definition. The sun, moon, and stars are all explicitly discussed in the corpus of ancient Egyptian literature. And, since the ancient Egyptians chose to anthropomorphize the sun, moon, and stars, then the ancient Egyptians were literally proponents of the concept of intelligent extraterrestrial life in the form of their many anthropomorphisms of the celestial, or extraterrestrial, sun, moon, and stars. Other stellar ancient Egyptian astronomical texts which discuss extraterrestrials, spaceships, and ancient astronauts, are, the Book of Nut, and, the Book of the Heavenly Cow. Extraterrestrials are mentioned quite frequently throughout various African cultures. The Ashanti tribe of Ghana claim that the Golden Stool, which is the throne of the Ashanti chief, was sent down from heaven by extraterrestrials. The Dogon people of Mali say that the progenitors of humanity were extraterrestrials called the Namo from the Sirius star. The Yoruba people of Nigeria say that Obatala and Oduduwa were extraterrestrials who climbed from heaven down to earth on a chain. The Maasai people of Tanzania and Kenya say that their ancestors were extraterrestrials who came down from heaven to earth. So extraterrestrial themes are in fact a common part of African culture. It was the European Catholic Church who had a problem with extraterrestrial concepts because the Pope feared that extraterrestrials were something he could not control. If you say the Greys or the Reptilians are not real and are just made up, that is fine, but you have to be honest and also say that the ancient Egyptian stories about Sahu, Sopdet, and Sopdu, are not real and are just made up also. If you say that Sahu, Sopdet, Sopdu, and the many other stellar ancient Egyptian stories and anthropomorphisms are merely metaphors and symbolisms for the sun moon and stars, then you have to be fair and say that the greys and reptilians and their associated stories are just metaphors and symbolisms for the Zeta Reticuli and Draco star constellations respectively. Don't be a hypocrite. The ancient Egyptians believed your soul had an extraterrestrial origin, that is to say it came from the heavens, and the ancient Egyptians believed your soul could return to the stars after you died. 
The ancient Egyptians believed in astrology as is evident from the zodiac ceiling at the Hathor temple at Dendera. Astrology says that a person's personality is determined by the extraterrestrial star constellation in the sky at the time of the person's birth. So if people with extraterrestrial souls and personalities from the stars, built the pyramids, then the ancient Egyptians actually believed that extraterrestrials built the pyramids. If the ancient Egyptians used the stars to help align the pyramids, then the ancient Egyptians believed that extraterrestrials in the form of stars helped them build the pyramids. It is a fact beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the ancient Egyptians believed in spaceships, ancient astronauts, and extraterrestrials. Oh, and one more thing, you know why I wear this odd-shaped hat? Because I got a cone-shaped head. Another oddity that can be found in ancient Egyptian culture. And if you say the heads got this way through the practice of warping the skull through skull binding, then why don't the people who claim to follow the Egyptian or Kemetic way of life start binding their skulls? The ancestors have shown you the way. Warp speed, engage. Otep. Stasi.